Hello, everybody. Welcome to our 26th episode of Ready to Roll. Our basically, I mean, this yeah, for 26 episodes every other week, doing a year's worth of episodes. Crazy to think about. We're very excited, very happy. Um, <coughs> so announcements quick before we hop in. Um, as usual, we will have rehash the rolls next week um, for uh, Ready to Roll. Um, and yeah, that will so that will can happen next week on uh, Wednesday as usual. But we also, just as a reminder, we have a one shot tomorrow, Ragnarok scenario. It is going to be my first time running uh, a Savage Worlds uh, game, so that'll be interesting. I uh, yeah, running a Savage Worlds game will be a new adventure, like new adventures here. But uh, you know, so you will see a lot of familiar faces in that one shot. It, it you know faces such as Sarah and Ian from this show. You will see Jeff, who um, is who plays in Heroic Tales. You will see Adam. He will also plays in Heroic Tales and previously was on this show. He will be in that one shot. Uh, we will also have two special guests, my older brother Eric, who introduced me to Savage Worlds, and our good friend uh, Peter, who is a longtime supporter of this channel and our other channels as well. Very grateful to him and being here. Um, but yeah, so tune in. It'll be at the same, our usual time, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. It will be a lot of fun. If you want to get to know a little bit more about it, uh, check out, um, check out, um, the, you know, look on Discord and check out the, um, the little primer that I put on there in the announcements about it. Um, but with that, um, um, I should also say we don't have uh, Heroic Tales of Rosewood Hall next week. Yes. Um, I'm going to be out of town, out of state. Yes. Um, yes, so with that, uh, Lydia, do you want to give us our recap of last episode? Yeah. So last episode, we went to a play, a very, like, into the woods sort of romanticized um play and it got wrecked halfway through one of the one of the cast members hopped up and started spewing some nonsense about uh the profane guard and everything well maybe not the profane guard but like that the city was going to be destroyed by the dark one and stuff like that and freaking blew up the whole place and we were all running away and we thought we felt down a hole into the sewer. But after we all got out in two separate groups, because we'd been split up horrifically, uh, we found out from Corbett's family that we just kind of disappeared. So the assumption being that the Dark Priestess um, stole us away. Um, after we all got back, though, we kind of... I don't know, we got together, put our heads together, talked about um, what we wanted to do and how we were feeling about things. I don't think there were any like big plans that happened during that, right? Like, we we're basically just saying your dad is sketchy and the Dark Priestess is a problem. Um, Corvette and Jelania had a heart to heart ish and prepared to have another one like the next day. Um, Corvette got told that his sister Tatiana is about to get uh, mind controlled and possibly do something really, really terrible and that she needs to be stopped and protected. And Galena um, and Piotr got a surprise visitor from Captain Leodov who made Piotr fall asleep magically and then told Galena that the Dark Priestess is actually our boss and she wants to meet up the next night at midnight uh, with just the four of us. And that's I think that's where we stopped. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Real quick before we hop in, we do have a request, and it has been a while, so it's been a year. Um, real quick, just everyone say your name and your class. Um, let's start with Sarah and then go. Hey, my character's name is Galena, and she's an elven wizard. Awesome. Uh, my character's name is Corvette, and I play as a hex 
Blade Warlock Asimer. My turn? Oh. <laughs> I play as Piotr. I am a human bard. And I am Jelenia, the tiefling fighter. Also, I realize I went in Ian's spot, but my, I'm Braid and not Ian. Just it's so okay. The chaos, the chaos, <laughs> as bad as it was, I think we we have gotten over it. Oh, good. And I, right. of course, am Patrick. So we'll pick up right where we left off. Yoter, you are starting to come awake. Galena, Captain Leadov has just magically stepped out of your room. Magic portal. And Piotr. I'm assuming I don't really know what the heck just happened, right? No, you're completely... I mean, you realize that you're probably going to be a little confused that you fell... Like, you literally just fell asleep on the floor. Like, you didn't yeah. make it to a bed or a couch. You just you just plopped on the floor. But do I remember... I can't remember if I saw Lyadov before I passed out. You did not see Lyadov, so... Piotr like, gets up off the floor, looks at the bed, looks at the floor looks at um oh my gosh sarah what is your character's name <laughs> she it's literally cool. just said like two minutes ago galena 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 goodness i was it's like you know when it's gone like i just felt the sheer absence of that name from my brain anyway sorry um piotr looks at the floor looks at the bed looks at galena Looks down at his hand. Uh, what? What just happened? I just did. I I remember standing in the doorway, and I don't think I was that tired. I, I don't know. I guess I was. You were put to sleep with a sleep spell. Oh, see, you sound cheery when you say that. I don't. Hmm. How, who? Do you know who did it? Oh yes. Hmm. Do you, would you like to divulge the identity of this assailant? Shall we term him, coin him, them? Who did it? He just put you to sleep. He didn't assault you. Um, he did it really quickly too. Yeah. I didn't even hear him doing it. Yeah. I see, I, I, I mm -hmm. So, so it was a man. Do, do you know who it was? Oh, yes. Let me think about this for a second. Uh, yeah. Go for it. Mm. I have to tell Jelania something. And I'm going to have to use his name anyway. So, uh -huh. It probably doesn't matter if I tell you. Listen, if... Telling me is a bad thing then it's already a really bad thing. So you may as well just tell me. Don't understand. I don't right now. That but. is very true. I'm actually quite confused. Yes. Let's walk and talk on the way to Jelania's room. Of course. Man, it's like... My head just hurts. Like, did I, fa did I fall on the ground? I don't... Like, wow. Yes. I oh. thought you were really sleepy and worn out. I really need to work on my situational awareness. I was getting you a couch pillow. Oh, I appreciate the the gesture. Uh, but yeah, no, I... um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go get Jelanya, shall we? Yes, because I have to deliver a message. Alright, so... You make your way out of your room and make your way to... Jelania's room, which she's not too far down the hall from you. Only like two o'clock, maybe. Walk on over. Knock on the door. Jelania, are you still awake? Uh, yeah, I, I, I probably needed to take a bath after the sewer. I know that Glena had made me all like fancy and stuff, but I do. I, I, I was probably gonna do that anyway, just in case. You, you feel the ache you, still? Yeah, there's a whiff somewhere. Uh, am I in trouble? 
You seem very serious, and there's both of you. Honestly, I don't know yet, but somebody drugged me or something. I don't know. She's going to no. tell us all about it. Spell. Okay, that's yeah. that's not better. That's actually probably worse. Yeah, what? Yeah. See, I. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm sure. I'm sure Galena is going to spin us a riveting yarn. Oh, so you don't think I'm going to tell the truth? Uh, no. Yarn was in uh, uh, not a good word. Point is, I'm sure that. We are very excited to hear what happened and why my head hurts. Do you already know why your head hurts? It hit the floor. Okay, can we just let's get to the point. If there's something if someone cast a spell on Beodra and made his head hurt, I need to know about it. Are we about to get like ambushed by a bunch of mages or something? I don't know, are you? It's just one thing after the other with this group. Yeah, that is sort of how it has been going. Okay, anyway. We need to go get Corvit in a minute, so I should probably just tell you, you need to call your men off to from searching after Captain Leodov because he's trying to do something, and they're getting in the way. That was sort of the point, actually. That's why I sent him to do that. Well, he apparently doesn't appreciate it. Uh, that's, I mean, I think that's also sort of the point. He's, I feel like he's probably a problem. Oh, well then don't call them off because they're getting in the way. It's up to you whether you think them getting in the way is a good thing or a bad thing. Right. I mean, the assumption that I have and that I was told is that he's working for the Dark Priestess and I want to, like, stop him from doing what he's doing. Oh... Right, like I said, we need to go talk to Corvit, probably, because you guys usually, you chosen ones, you make decisions as a group, right? We try. I feel hey. like often, actually, the decision is made for us by somebody who is not in the group, and then it is pushed on us, actually. Yeah, <laughs> normally it's like, you need to do this, and then we, then decide democratically to do the thing that we had to do anyway but in this case it's really hard to tell <clears throat> whether or not a choice has been laid before us or what because we don't know what happened but i'm sure once we get corbett in our presence we will have a tell -all. maybe and she walks <laughs> out the door and goes to corbett's room <laughs> You're going to make your way down Corvette's room and you hear the sound of footsteps in the hallway. And you're in the corner and you see some guards look at you. What are you doing out of bed? I want to go talk to Corvette. I have to wait till the morning. Strict orders because of all the events that happened this evening to make sure all guests are in their quarters. There was no one outside my quarters making sure I stayed in. Well, we don't have anyone outside the quarters, but we are patrolling the hallways and making sure people are, um, the, the people that people are staying in the people are staying in. Why? Our orders from uh, both the Boyar Conrad, concerned about the safety of the household and the people in here. Oh, I feel like you going take that as an insult to you that he doesn't think that you can do your job to protect us and that we should protect ourselves. It's easier to protect people who stay in their rooms and stay where they're told. I'm sure the boyar would be fine with us consulting well, with... Give me a persuasion. Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please, Mr. Bard. Take that! Hold on, I'm adding stuff. At least you're not subtracting stuff. Uh, nope, not for this check. 22. Okay. The guard kind of looks at you. 
Make it quick. Of course. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Don't let the vampires bite. Shall we? Are vampires usually a problem here? Um... <clears throat> run into any yet where we tread i uh, i mean it's about the only thing we haven't had to stab in the heart at this point so soon enough but it was mostly just a a quirky little jib they come to um corvid's room i'm assuming yes come to corvid's room um <clears throat> All right, Corvette, you hear a knock on your door. Do you, it, um, do you answer? Well, I call out first. Uh, just a second. I hear some fumbling. And then Corvette comes to the door, opens it. You see he's in, like, a robe that he just threw on. Uh, hey, guys. You're looking fancy. Uh, um, No, c come on in. So... Let you guys in. Close the door. So, this is late time party, maybe? Yeah, we were actually really bored. We just figured we'd hit you up. No, actually, <laughs> um, Galena has something she is probably going to share with us now. Okay. What I is don't this? know. I don't know if I should, though. Hmm. Because you see, the reason he put Piotr to sleep. Oh, wait. Captain Leodov visited me. He oh, what? Did he now? <laughs> no, I was right then. Those guards are really bad at letting people just wander around. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Okay. No, I see it. I see it now. But keeping us in our rooms won't do any good since he just popped in through a portal. Even better. Leodov? Even better. That. Okay. Didn't see that one coming. The reason he put Piotr to sleep Wait, was because. What now? <laughs> Piotr, you fell asleep. You. He I, put you to sleep. I woke up on a floor. That's what happened. But yes, apparently... I mean, it's it, not uh, the first time, I'm sure. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, apparently it was our friend who did that. You just think, okay. So what do you want to visit you for, Galena? Well, first I was supposed to tell Jelanya to call her men off because they're getting in his way. Okay. Just sort of the point. They are actually supposed to find him um, so I could, you know, talk to him because he's a bad guy, I think. Okay. So, if he's a bad guy, why do he visit you? Just Probably bad guy stuff on account of the fact that he had to make sure I was unconscious first. He said that there are ears listening in, and that's why he had to come to me because apparently nobody magical or powerful is paying any attention to me. But somebody I, is paying attention to you. I have bad news for both him and you. There is a hag who was, on some level, paying attention to me. Or to you, sorry. No, he said the curse doesn't work like that. She's paying attention to you. She seemed to be aware of you before we met. Yes, but that doesn't mean she's paying attention to me now. Um, valid, I guess. But... If I were you, I'd be worried, because it means she's definitely paying attention to you. Oh, I've been no. worried this whole time. And I don't know who is paying attention to Corvette and Jelanya. 
Hard to tell. I... So... He told you to tell us things, but you can't tell us things because he told you... You can't? No, he didn't I'm say confused. that. He said he told me because if he told you, then the people paying attention to you would find out. But see, that's where it doesn't make sense because then if I tell you, they still find out because I told you. Very true. Unless you're some this? sort of like, you know, they can't see anything that you do. So when you tell us, they can't watch that. How about you write it down in a book and then we'll read it? Does it work like that? I, I don't, I don't think, think so. any of us have any idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we have, have no clue. We... Well, see, I would just... Sorry, please continue. Go either ahead. I tell you, and then you have to be prepared for whoever is listening in to try and stop you, if they're going to, or I don't tell you, and you decide... That you trust Captain Leodov to know what you would want to do. And when I say we need to go somewhere, you just come with me. It's up to you, really. I am so confused. You have to trust Captain <laughs> Leodov, and then you have to trust me. And I was only forced on your group because of the hag and curse. Sure this you is, want to keep calling for that? This is trustception. But Kilmer called her. That... Does that insult her? It's really bad to insult her. It shouldn't. Anymore. It's what she is. Right? They call themselves that. Anyway. I don't know. I... Here, here's my vote. And I'll put it to the rest of the gang to... Tip the balance one way or the other. I vote, since we have literally zero idea what the heck is going on, that it is more valuable for us to have the information, even at the risk, almost certainty in some sense, that a hag or something else uh, will also gain access to that information, than to be completely in the dark, since, no offense, Galena, it seems that you lack the context to interpret the information that you gleaned. Yeah, I want to know, but... Sorry, Jelania. I say, I'm very appreciative that you're not just, like, throwing around the information that could be very dangerous. To everyone, I appreciate very much that you're being careful with that. Um, not a lot of people will think that deeply about it. I would assume that everyone knows about it already. And I uh, have been so extremely frustrated that we haven't been... We've been apparently chosen to do something and we've been getting no guidance whatsoever. So any information is incredibly valuable right now. Wait, and guys. I assume if we don't have information, we're going to die. So if we do have information, we probably will still die. So it's about the same to me. So I'd rather know. Yeah, yeah there's already enough people after us. Let's just <laughs> hopefully uh, survive this one. So pass on the full message. It's my vote. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who do you think you were chosen by? Corvid, what does it... It was you and Artyom that told us. I just assumed it was Silhana. I mean... I think that's... Isn't having... that what Artyom said? I think so. You were chosen by Silhana... Doesn't she already have a group of fancy chosen? But aren't they just chosen by the church? And well, maybe they say not. they're chosen by Solhana, but I think like, like when say we that, met them but... is when he said like, oh, that's not true because it's us. Listen, 
some people just have identity crises and it's fine for them to think that oh wait what if <gasps> okay well okay. at first i thought you were delusional because chosen to save the world and all of that now i'm beginning to think maybe you were chosen just not by who you think to do what you think you're supposed to do who do you think we were chosen by he did say that while the theater was collapsing, the Dark Priestess had a panic attack and tried to pull us out of there, and something interfered, and we ended up in the sewers instead. I mean, we've been pulled before by the Dark Priestess, assuming a while ago, but... What are you In saying? A second. This all happens. Mm. This all happens relatively soon after we recover the journal again. Svetla's journal. This all seems fishy. It seems like somebody's trying to mess with our perception of reality. You're just now guessing that? Um, it's deeper than that. Never mind. Uh, Anya, we need to talk later. Aren't we talking right now? Or yeah, did you I guess like... we are. I'm worried that someone may have tampered with that journal to manipulate things. I don't know how much stock we should put in any information we get in it since it's been recovered. But that's kind of an that aside. I've told anybody except for Antivin that I have it back. Yes, but character. who... Like, I don't think that Piotr is aware that I have it back yet. Oh, oops. Retcon! <laughs> 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 Accidental metagaming, it happens. Yeah, oops. Sorry, guys. Never mind. Now everybody knows what's going on in Ian's brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Would you like to talk to the Dark Priestess about it? Pull her up. Let's have a chat. Share a pint. Okay, she said... Or Captain Leodov said... That we can go to his boat at midnight tomorrow. And you can have your chance to talk with her. What? What is it with these occult people and midnight? Why can't we just... Have a morning tea? Wait a second. I feel like... Morning. So, my assumption of everything always is that she... She first took us because she wanted to kill us or sacrifice us or something. Because if we're the Chosen of Sulhana, what better way to go about winning than getting the Chosen of Sulhana and just killing them before everything even really starts? So this, to me, sounds like kind of a bad idea. It does kind of sound like a trap. Yeah. Also... He said you're not allowed to bring your boy toy. And I made him clarify that he meant Antivin. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't but why not? I didn't ask why? Did he even say why she wanted to talk to us? Because this seemed... I mean, obviously it would be a lie no matter what. This sounds well, like a setup. He but implied this... that she's the one that chose you, so I suppose because she wants to talk to her chosen? Chosen or d'oeuvres? We're like the chosen what? of... She chose the dark us? dark priestess, you're saying. 
I'm not saying it. I don't know who chose you and is messing with all of you. <laughs> uh, Corbett stands up, and is there any kind of drink in his room at all that's available? Sure. You can say whatever your favorite drink is, you probably would keep it um, in hand in your in your room. Awesome. I pull out, if there's any glasses or anything at all, pull it out, put it in front of us, start pouring, like... Wait. So, we're, it's claimed to be we're not the Chosen of Sohana, but of the Dark Priestess? Why? He takes a swig and it says, in any case, um, there's something else and I can't go meet with her tomorrow at midnight. Um, yeah. I had like a, an appearance, uh, a vision, a message from Bronislav just a little bit ago and he warned me that if I'm not by my sister's side all day tomorrow then something bad is going to happen um, that he takes a look at uh, Jelania and then a look at Galena and Piotr and ask them how much have you heard of the massacre of the monastery down at, in the Southern Isles? You guys can give me history checks if you want to see if you know anything about that. Yeah, where did I just How? add a die? Long ago did this happen? You wouldn't know about it, Glenn. Uh, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't about know. About a year. A, a little over a year. Uh, I failed. <laughs> what did you get? Two plus. I mean, it's going to be like a three or something. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Seven. That's a nine? Yeah, you don't know anything about it. Well, um... I was just going to ask if Jelania wanted to roll, or she's going to say that she knows nothing. I, mean, I kind of assume that I know, but that's a natural one, so... <laughs> you think you know. I'm... You're convinced that the uh, massacre oh, no. at Arthmail, um, that he, you think he's talking about some massacre that happened, like, uh, maybe, like, 200 years ago? Um, but okay. however, you're what's actually happening is you're getting confused with another monastery that a massacre happened in. Uh-huh. Gotcha. Common occurrence. Okay. I don't see how this is relevant right now, but... Um... Okay. So... Anyway, I know it's very far away, so few people actually know what happened, or I think only a handful know the truth. Um, essentially, where I grew up, the people who, who raised me, the church there, um were all killed except for me um and it was something came over me and it was done by my hand and when we were in cordovan and just realized that it was someone cast a spell or put a mind control something over me and i killed the people who raised me bronislav warned me that if i don't stay by my sister's side the same thing will happen to her that she'll commit some atrocity oh well, yeah uh, well, that's heavy i slide the drink over towards him a little bit more. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Takes a sip. What is this, anyway? I don't know. 
I haven't been here in a long time. <laughs> I just know it's alcohol. I'm glad it was it was a grape juice when you left. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I knew I would be here for a while, so I let it ferment just in this room forever. Oh yes, because your room would be the perfect conditions for fermentation. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still like tomorrow? No. Um. Yeah, so that's what happened, and I can't let that happen to my sister. No, we can't. Well, let's I don't know then. how in the... Go ahead, Piotr. Oh, I just said, let's not then. I'd love to meet the person who keeps interfering with our lives and be like, why? Yeah, such a fun opportunity to be murdered by her. But hey, at least we're face to so, face with the person. But here's my thing. It seems like we're slightly unskeptical of this this suggestion that the dark priestess is actually the one who's been controlling our lives this whole time this is like a pretty big plot twist i don't know maybe maybe i'm just tired just something seems off so here's my view of it i don't think it matters we got yanked from our lives and given very little guidance, just shoved in the valley, and we learn a lot about what's going on under the surface. We're not really given any guidance or told what to do by anyone, whether it's the Dark Priestess, or Silhana, or the Saints, or whatever. It's very, very light, you know? And really, we are deciding ourselves what we want to do. That's why I don't really see us being chosen as really a thing, or important. Like, Galena, you are apparently, I don't, the difference between you and us is nothing. You are being told by the same people to do the same things that we are, which means no one is telling you what to do. No one is telling us what to do. So we get to decide what we're going to do. So I don't, I don't see it as a, a grandiose selection. Maybe they see it that way, but I don't. So, if we want to go find the Dark Priestess, go kill her? Great! Awesome! I have my things that I want to do. I'm not really going to let them tell, try to stop me. Yeah. Well, somehow, I'm gonna have to convince... Tatiana that she'll want me around for a day. Does it have to be you? There are four of us. Or five of us. You can trade off, switch around. I guess, do you trust us to take care of your sister in the same way that you can? Some of you, yeah. But I couldn't stand leaving her side. Knowing that I didn't give my all tomorrow to prevent anything bad happening. Well, if she won't let you stay around, you might have to resort to it. Unless you literally want to go kidnap her and stick her in the locker in the room for the whole day. Who knows? Um, I don't even know who or what is targeting her but or how it really happens just watching over her but thank you i know there's a lot going on but will you guys help help me tomorrow of course yes 
the, these people have done the same thing to me. Uh, they they did the same thing to my brother Ritali. He killed the rest of my family. So if I had known, it would have been good. I would have loved to have a group of people like you to help me with that. But since it couldn't happen, at least I can be here for this and for you. Thank you. And Galena, sorry we keep dragging you into so much stuff. But we could sure use your help tomorrow. Sure seems like it. Thanks. <laughs> you can also leave whenever you need to. You, you Anytime, don't have to stay but... around. <laughs> you said that like you need you. you need pure functional. We prefer him that way, that's for sure. So, very grateful that you are willing to stick with us so far. Oh, well. I am out and about to get experiences, and a lot of interesting things happen to this group of people. Also, my mother has warned me against bards, nobles, tieflings. By observing you, I can see how many of her warnings are actually true. All with one group. What? What were her specific? The uh, her. Sp I can't talk. What were her specific warnings about bards? We They're are immoral. all. We are a dignified class of people. You you murdered a woman for no reason. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> true. And and apparently so did he. Many people. Yeah. <clears throat> We've all got uh, interesting pasts, don't we? Yes. I will clarify because I know this comes up sometimes. I've never eaten a child. Okay? What? <laughs> I will clarify. <laughs> never eaten a baby. Really? I know that sometimes it's that. I can you know, cross that prejudice. off the list. <laughs> okay, good. Blinks do not eat babies. Okay. This is giving <laughs> me rich flash flash. Yeah. Drift yeah. again. Oh. <laughs> Galena, you're amazing. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Sarah, we love you so much. <laughs> oh. We had a friend. My heart broke just like for a few seconds there, just so y'all know. Uh, well, before um, we have to go to bed, because those guards out in the hallway need to protect us, but only if we're huh? in our own beds. Wait. I have a question, Corbett. You may not be the best person to ask. But. Hey. When it comes to your father, would you say that he views the people around him, specifically like commoners, as tools and pawns to be used to gain power and wealth? Yes. He views anyone like that. Do you think that he would take a hostage to do so? I wouldn't doubt it. I see. How long have you told him we're staying? I haven't. I... Did I mention how long we were staying? You mentioned at least until after the wedding. Oh, the wedding. Oh. I <laughs> may have mentioned the wedding because that's coming up here in a couple of weeks. I see. I may need to do more research to see how to get rid of the curse on Piotr so that in case I need to slip away, it won't leave you guys with any problems. Are you assuming he was wanting to take you hostage? Could be a theoretical question. What? I mean, that's very specific. Who, is he, who would he try to manipulate with you? Piotr. Definitely Piotr. <laughs> sure, because 
Piotr has something that could possibly change the power balance in the country and bring someone lots of wealth. I mean, he are could. You, are you... Are you... Are you... Speculating? Or did you hear something? Because to be clear, I'm not aware of this special thing. What? Who's speculating? Who are you asking this to? Oh, Galena, sorry. <laughs> Am I speculating that you're special and could bring someone power and wealth? No. Oh, wait. I just remembered. I'm a wanted man. Oh, wait. <laughs> yes. It all makes... Well, then... Should, Should we maybe Ooh. consider not... Maybe yeah, you right. should don't yep. stay in the the castle? No, you need yeah. to stay around us in case you get jumped in the middle of the night. But apparently that <sighs> didn't work. Yeah, yes, it didn't work. Not. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I meant. I meant that he might turn you in for the bounty. Yep, that's it. Bedtime. Wait, what? No, it sounds like... It seemed a bit abrupt. But I have really low wisdom, so I'm going to just say I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's also it's... late, and... I am very tired and have other things preoccupying my mind, so. Yeah. What is then the plan tomorrow? We're all just going to hang out with Tatiana all day? Somehow? That's what I'm going to be doing. We're trying to. And not going to see the Dark Priestess at all? Patrick, remind me if I'm... Well, correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, Bronislav said, essentially, just all day tomorrow till midnight, kind of explicitly. Did he not... Did he, or was he not He explicit? said... He said all day tomorrow. I don't know if okay. he got explicit, but he did okay. say all day tomorrow. Can I roll an insight to check, check to see if he was meaning, like, all day till midnight, like, as in the entire day, or if it's, like, Make sure she's good most of the day. Check up on her type of thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, that, no. What did you get? You got a five? five. Yeah, you have no idea what he meant. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you just know that. Yeah, pretty... so... you, you're, yeah, you're, you just know that you need to stay with her. Okay, so. I. Uh, could we take her to the Dark Priestess? Oh, that's such a bad idea. I'm pretty Valid. sure she can't come if Antivin can't come. But you could have her walk you either. to the boat. But she doesn't go all the way to the boat and on. Let's go on a midnight walk, sister, down to the docks where all the sketchy people are. Exactly. It's, the, it's, the, nicer dock. it's the nicer docks, so a little less sketchy. But a little sketchy, yes. Tell some bodyguards to come with us to escort her back. And if she doesn't want to come, I'll turn her into a hamster and you can put her in a cute little cage and bring her that way. <laughs> we'll see if we can't figure something else first. Because I imagine her wrath after that would be even greater than what it is now. And I would not want to feel that wrath. But thank you. That's a very clever uh, solution to the problem. That's for sure. She gets too mad and tries to hurt you. I could turn her into a hamster again. I like that. I <laughs> let's hold off, but not a bad idea. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, all right. So, are we? You guys good to just meet in the morning? I'm. Find wherever Tatiana is and somehow convince her to hang out with us all day. Yeah, I mean, we're cool, right? Yeah, we're jive. I mean, do we have to sit next to her all day? Can we just watch from afar? We could probably watch her, but sticking by her side, I think, was... Because, Corvid, you can be possible. invisible, can you not? 
She doesn't have to know you're there. Yes. I don't know if that would last all day, though. So, mm -hmm. that would... I mean, I could for a bit if I really needed to. Mm -hmm. Just if she gets really tired of you for some reason. That idea. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well... I can also disguise myself and make myself look like a guard or whoever, and I can... That's brilliant, That's actually. A... Not for very long, also. Once again, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> oh, never mind. I can do that, too. We could stagger it. I follow her around as the guard for an hour, and then you follow her around, and then we turn Corvette into a raven or a mouse or something, and he follows her around for an hour. Mm-hmm. And then you can be invisible for a little while. Hey. This is becoming more feasible. It is. <clears throat> I might try asking her too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Use your words. <laughs> <laughs> How much do we respect her privacy? Oh. Thank you, is there everyone. a specific reason you don't want to just talk to her? No, like, I'm seriously, like, I'll try. But, in case, she just doesn't like me very much. Isn't she your sister? Yes, but that, she still doesn't like me very much. Oh, I don't have any siblings, but I thought they were supposed to like each other. I, sometimes, I wish it was that way just by default, sometimes, but... Come to find out, you can royally screw up sometimes. Yeah, Shalani makes no comment about her sister turning on all of her family. <laughs> um, and with that, Corvette stands, takes whatever's left of the bottle, puts it away. It's like, thank you guys. And... I'm going to get some rest, hopefully, for the big day tomorrow. All right. First person who finds Tatiana in the morning is a winner. What do we win? win? A, you win a health potion. If you can oh. prove you're the first person to find her, you get the health potion. I found okay. one in the sewers today, so it's really uh, uh, please wash well that, distilled. Maybe. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Good night. Good night, everyone. And you all return to your rooms. And as as they leave, Corbett looks out. Is there any guards like around? Like he was like guards telling him they can't leave their rooms. What? You don't see any guards. Okay. But. Probably need to go tell Antivin to call the soldiers off, though. That could probably wait till morning. But... Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey. He's probably asleep. Right, so we know you can't do asleep, anything for like unlike six the rest or seven of you, hours. he's not a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he not? Maybe not he really. His actions. <laughs> but he doesn't okay. like the North Saiyans. So <laughs> this is one character trait. <laughs> but all right. So you all go to your rooms and you all go to sleep. Oh no, he's pausing for too long, you guys. Something bad is gonna happen. Piotr, this is where the bounty hunters come now, as <laughs> he's gonna die. just go in. Yeah. <laughs> um. Or Tatiana stabs us all in her sleep. He was talking about this current midnight. Okay, that's all right. awful. You all awaken the next morning. Nothing interesting is happening in your sleep that you are aware of. Um. So, Torvet. We're aware of? I don't, I don't like <laughs> that yes. line. I mean, so, it's the morning time. Are you going to go try to find your sister? I wake up early, quickly groom myself, and then go. All right. 
So, you, uh, the first thing you do since you all go so early is you make your way to your sister's room. And you knock on the door, and Tatiana opens it after a few moments, um, still dressed in her nightgown, her sleeping attire. She's just staring at you. Corvette, what are you Hi, doing Tatiana. here? I want to apologize, and I need to tell you something. Do you have time? Do you have a moment? You want to apologize for a lifetime of everything? If I could, I would. But I know that's not possible right now. I'm apologizing for <laughs> what I need to tell you. You have 30 seconds. Have I ever told you about Bronislav? Of course. We all know about your saintly protector. <laughs> um, he mentioned... That I should be by your side today. Give me a persuasion check. This is like... Good. Good. <laughs> 16 plus, And this is my best... It's like your charisma based caster, so... 24. 24. She lets out a sigh. And why would he do that? He warned me of something bad that could happen to you today. And I don't... And I know there's love lost. There's... There's hard things between us. But I don't want that to happen to you. What? And in the middle, outside her door... I get on my knees. Tatiana, I will do anything you ask. Anything I one ask. Day. Besides throwing myself into the ocean, I'm Well then I'm not actually interested. don't like swimming. <laughs> I'll do anything you ask. What could be so terrible that could happen to me that you'd be willing to do anything that I asked? Can I get two extra minutes to tell you? Fine. Privately, do you mind if we step inside? Sure. And she lets you into the room. Hey. I, I was hoping that once the door is closed, I check to make sure everything is safe. But there's no one else check. in here. Oh, gosh. 15. Okay, you don't notice anything. I then say, have you heard of the massacre at Arthmail? What kind of question is that, Corvette? Of course I heard about it. Let me tell you what really happened. And I tell her how I was mind controlled to do that. She stops for and listens to you as you tell the story. And what's so terrible and what, what does it have to do with me Bronislav said that something someone I don't know exactly who or what wants to do the same thing to you that happened to me wants to make you commit the same horrors that I did he said I should be by your side today to help prevent that. 
I beg of you just for one day, let me and my friends just help you do whatever you want, but let us be near you. Fine. On one condition. You say you'll do whatever I ask? I want yes. you to go to Father and renounce any birthright and any claim, any th inheritance that you would receive as his son. All of it. You will uh, On his deathbed, you will receive not a gold coin, not a single piece of copper. It's jumping into the ocean. I'll do it. Then let's go do it right now. Okay. <laughs> Patrick, gosh <clears throat> dang it. I follow Tatiana. Okay, let's make your way. Or I let her. Well, she's going to get changed first. Um, yeah. And then yeah. you... No, you're gonna say something. No, no. Okay, you make your way to your father's um, office, and she knocks on the door, and then steps back and crosses her arms, sits and watches you. The door opens, and Fredo is there. Looks to you, Master Young Master Corvett. It's a pleasure to see you. Uh, Hi, Fredo. You have a uh, business with your father. Yes, I do. You see if he's available. Turns around, closes the door behind him. Comes back a few moments later and opens and says, Your father can see you now. Walk inside. Are any of the rest of us around for any of this? No. Did he wake up? Oh, shoot. Oh. Nope. This is the Corvette thing. <laughs> All right, Corvette. Go into your to go into the office. I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Go to the uh, office. Is in there with me? No, she's staying outside. Go in, and your father oh, gosh, is sitting okay. at his desk. His father looks up. Orvit! My son, it's good to see you. Just that last night's excitement didn't shake you too much. No, but a lot of things have. Glad to hear that. I hope you're not feeling unsafe. I've sent, I've sent to the Ashen Palace. I've requested some extra guards. Father, I can't be your heir or inheritance or I can't be what you want me to be. What do you mean? I am not fit to rule the Southern Isles. I'm not prepared. And I need to renounce my claim on any of your inheritance. Uh, he leans back and puts his hands together, crossing their laces his fingers. Oh, that's a good joke. That's a good joke, my son. Very, very good joke. What? Ah, no, ah, that, that was funny. No, seriously, Corvette. How can I help you? <laughs> and with that, I um, burst out the angelic wings with the asimer. Roll me a d100. Mm. d100. And. First. 20. Your wings do not come when summoned. Are my eyes still gold? Your eyes are still... I mean, I don't know. Can you see your eyes? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I look at my father saying, I no longer have the worthiness or the power or the blessing of the dragons. 
What are you talking about? Your eyes are gold. Just as dragon touches the day you were born. And with that, I summon Elodin. What? And what is that? This is how I've been able to protect and defend. And because of it, I am no longer worthy. And Tatiana is by far the best choice for you. And with that, I mentally think and pray one last time to Bronislav Saint. I am sorry. May Silhana be with you. And please help my sister. And I cut off any connection mentally. And I reach out to Elodin and say, give me more of your power. You don't feel any change at this immediate moment. Look, Conrad continues. If... Did your sister put you up to this? No. I do this to myself. What happened at the monastery a year ago, I, I understand Corvette was... Traumatic. All your the people who raised you dying. Ah. This he points at Elodin. Isn't something that we can't we can't work past. But uh, I am denying your request to remove you from the inheritance. But you can go tell your sister that you tried. I make the laws in this family, son. Until the day that I die, I choose. But the, the laws of our land. The laws of our land are so easily manipulated. The laws of our religion are so easily manipulated. All we need is someone a little less stubborn sitting in that uh, flaming cathedral. You dare threaten? That's no threat. Just hoping that mayhaps the next Archmatriarch will be willing to see things. Throws a letter at you. I sent a request to the Archmatriarch asking that you be the one uh, to pass the inheritance on to you. She denied me my request. As she should. Hmm, she for seems you don't know for so. Despite all of your spies and all of your ears everywhere you don't know everything i know way more than you think boy i would and you still think of you. me as a boy you'll be a boy until the day i die and you'll be an old man when that comes hopefully for your sake are you threatening me hmm. it's just a hope maybe Fredo! The, uh, steward comes back in. I'm very, I'm done with me and my, uh, son have concluded our business. You please show him out. Yes, my lord. Says and he motions to Corvette. And Corvette, you see a slight, you see sparks jumping in between Fredo's fingers. As he seems to be getting prepared. Or if you decide to not go willingly. Good, Fredo. I'm good. And Elodin's still there, and I know it. And I walk out with Elodin. As you get to the door, Fredo looks at you. I, uh... Avaro, where I come from, may be more free with our usage of magic, but, uh... We uh, still warn about 
the dangers of making packs with beings of unknown origins. I'd be careful if I were you. I don't think you fully comprehend what you are, uh, what you're bargaining away. The door in motions for you to go out. Thank you, Fredo. I walked out and then let Eladin disappear. Tatiana? Is she still there? Yeah, she's still there, standing. I didn't hear any shouting. I'm certain that he was going to, to, rip, to rip you a new one. Because, you know, Father, he's as stubborn as they come, and he won't accept my renou renouncement. Can you imagine that? So, to continue on and fulfill the promise I made to you, I'm willing to renounce it to whoever you want me to. The Archmatriarch, the Tsar, whoever is fit. You did what I Just asked, let me Corbett. Be with you. you did what I asked. You're welcome to be with me tonight. And then she walks up and uh, gives you a hug. Um, thank you. I need you to give and me I... a constitution saving throw. <laughs> I've literally been screaming this whole time. What the heck? Pretty good. 17. You feel yourself getting weak in the knees and you feel a little prick on the back of your neck. No. What are you? She says, just begins like holding you close as you feel yourself start slowly passing, you know, to unconsciousness. It's okay, brother. It'll all be okay. No. And you fall asleep. I got it. All right. Piotr, Galena, Shalanya, what are you guys doing with your morning? <laughs> uh, <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I need to You're go just call out of in to call off the soldiers. Okay. So you knock on the door, and there's actually, as you get to the door, there's a note on the door from Antivin saying that he will be uh, out for the day. He has been us. Uh, he was. Uh, summoned to the Ashen Palace to help in preparation for um, security for the wedding. Okay. So I, I, I don't know. I think I probably would need to go find Captain Leosha then okay. and tell him. It doesn't take you very at. long. It doesn't take you very long. Captain Leosha is just in the barracks with the rest of the soldiers. Um, he looks at you to approach. Well, lady. I uh, don't have uh, any news on the search yet. No, it's all right. Uh, we managed to locate him ourselves. So your uh, your efforts are very much appreciated, but uh, the situation seems to have resolved itself. Very well. Then, uh, then we will put, take we will call our men off the search. Thank you. He goes and he barks orders at two lesser soldiers, and they go run off into the city. Um, and he looks at you. Oh, you're right, my lady. You seem troubled. Oh, that's very typical for me. You have a lot of weight on your shoulders. Yeah. I hope that your conversation with the captain is fruitful. He's an interesting man. Is very much is. Okay. So, Galena, you're headed to breakfast. You have to, I'm assuming you're headed with her because you don't like headaches. Yep. Okay. You make your way down to the, you know, to the dining hall where the servants do have breakfast waiting for, for you guys. Um, <clears throat> you, you know, it's just it's a pretty standard fare for you know, you know, breakfast, you know. 
nothing overly fancy. Probably some bacon, some bread, toasted bread. Pretty standard. Um, um, Sujelanya, I'm assuming that after you've done that, you probably will join them for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah having breakfast. And... Um, like, eyes out for Corvette, though. For Corvette yeah. and Tatiana, for sure. So after about... Um, half an hour you know there is no sign of corvette no sign of tatiana um there is you know you know you, you see pretty much every other member of the family can pass through the hall at some point you know uh <clears throat> the leak coming to uh you know and hitting on on Jelania a, a, a little bit um uh anya talking to galena about possibly going to go look at dresses um, to which I would assume Galena would be like, ah, today's not the best day, maybe tomorrow. Um, and, you know, uh, and to, you know, Piotr's surprise, Conrad does come talk to Piotr and ask a little bit about some information on getting the, on the good side of the Boyar of Vinhelm, which I would assume Piotr was like, oh, I'm not actually in a good position to, to, to talk about that right now, but. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, but yeah, you, there's no sign of Corbett, no sign of Tatiana. Okay. Well, I guess it's time to fulfill our duty to try and find uh, the sister. I assume Corvid is with her, but he wanted our help, so we need to go and find them. Yeah, sounds as good of a plan as any. I was going to ask one of the guards if they've seen either of them. Um, okay, so give me an investigation check. Hmm. Oh, I don't like Maybe that. Maybe I'll roll better than a one this time. It's 14. Thank you. Can I? Oh, are we all rolling? If you want. I would love to. Meh. Okay. So it doesn't take you very long. What is your meh, by the way, Ian, just so I know? 15. Okay. So it doesn't take you very That's not meh. It doesn't take you very long. Because uh, I saw a 10 at first. Uh-oh. Before but I added. It doesn't yeah, take sorry. you very long, but you do come to a... Uh, you do come, you know, you do find a guard who's like, oh, yes, I saw Lady, um, I saw Lady Tatiana leaving the grounds with her brother not too long ago. I believe they were headed to the marketplace. Okay. So I'm assuming you're all going to head to the marketplace. Shall we go that way? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to, like, not metagame the panic. <laughs> like, oh yeah, they're just they're going to, they're going shopping. Probably gonna get some pretty clothes because that's what Corbett likes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you're assuming that when he says marketplace, um, he doesn't mean the uh, central district marketing place marketplace. He means the lower district marketplace. So um, did we not ask for clarification, or would we not have? Well, I mean, you wouldn't have. Well, the other because... one burned, right? Well, no. I mean, some of this burned, not all of it, but, okay. um, because, you know, and you wouldn't have asked for clarification because he's a noble and the nobility only pretty much shops in the lower district marketplace is it's the higher class marketplace. So you make your way, <coughs> excuse me, you make your way, um, through, you know, the upper district down the cliff side and you come you know a lot of the stalls in the upper you know in the lower district marketplace are burned um there are still a few um however that were set up there are of course some you know, nearby um merchant buildings that are still standing and what are you going to do to try to locate your friends or your friend and his sister um Pietro's just kind of lacks daisically he's just He's like, oh, we're in this area. He's just kind of looking around at the other stuff, assuming that they'll run into each other. Okay. Uh, Jelani's going to start asking, like, 
probably go find like the fancy clothes vendors, ask them if they've seen them. Okay. Like, check in there first. All right. Um, no one reports having seen them come this way. Okay. I'll widen my criteria of who I ask. <laughs> <laughs> Start just asking people. Mm -hmm. One just... rung wider. Um, nope. No one has could recall seeing Corvette or Tatiana. Just they would. Everyone would know. People would know if they'd seen an ASMR. How long has it been at this point? It's probably been like, like a good two. It's been probably been like a good two, two and a half hours at this point. So you're. You're walking down the. You're walking down the you know, some some uh, you know an alley whatever would classify as an alley in the, uh, um, fancy district and, Jelanya, you hear the sound of large wings behind you. And you turn. Excuse me. <laughs> you turn around and you see. My God. A Batman familiar shape a, the familiar shape of Yarick He's standing behind you he looks at you you told me that I didn't do enough and that I need to be less concerned about my war in hell and more concerned about the war going on here I come to let you know that I'm showing concern and you and Galena, you know, Piotr and Galena, you see this massive guy. Like, he's, like, seven feet tall. He's a tiefling with very dark gray skin, you know, and large black wings and just the sickest-looking armor and sword you've ever seen. Um, and he... Really heavy metal. Yeah. Like, right <laughs> from the cover of a rock album. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Galena, have you ever seen that guy before? No. Have you? Hmm. Nope. Let's go introduce ourselves. No, or... let's not go closer. <laughs> I'm worried for our friend, but uh, you're probably right. What right. is it that you show concern about? Your friend, the ASMR who doesn't want to be an ASMR. The one who rejects the blessings of the goddess who has so gracefully had to bestow them upon him. No, he... You will not find him here. He has... been taken. He's been taken by the Ashen Hunter. Oh... Wait, okay. Are you... I assume you're talking about Corvette? Who else would I be talking about? I have yet to meet another ASMR who does not want to be dragon-touched. I hadn't realized that was his feelings on that. Um, you need to speak with your where... friends more, it seems. That was on the schedule for today, but uh, apparently not. Where is he? He is where the... Ashen Hunter hunting grounds are. The Ashen Hunter earned its specific? The Ashen Hunter earns its name by what you call the lower dock districts, but the common folk call the Ashen District due to the poor materials that were used in its construction. I cannot pinpoint his exact location as the forces that seek to thwart and other plans of the goddess are hiding his location from me exactly, but he is in the Ashen District. How much time do we have? What are they going to do to him? That I do not know. That is also hidden from me. I do know if you do not arrive soon or something else mm -hmm. does not happen, Your friend may not survive. Okay. Uh, thank you. 
welcome. I do hope this has earned me some favor in your eyes. Um, we'll see how this ends. Um, but it's definitely uh, noted. And I turn to like talk to Galena and Piotr. And you hear the ruffle of wings. Just a brief glance back reveals that Yarg is no longer there. And to Galena and Piotr, it just looks like he just like you blinked and he was just gone. <laughs> hmm. What has been taken? We have to go to the Lord Docks now. Oh, okay. Let Let's go now. Mm -hmm. All right. I can uh, explain as we go if you want. I'd love that. Do we know what's going on? Um, not, not really. Uh, he was taken by the Ashen Hunter. I don't know if you have heard much about them. Just some psychopath murderer or something was terrorizing certain areas of town. It's why there's a curfew and we can't go out on our own. Gotcha. So... As tends to be the case, we are interwoven into yet another giant regional thing going on. So that's fun. All right. Well, uh, let's go die or whatever. Let's get our friend back. I'd prefer okay? not to die. You seem very, I, I don't know, aggravated and uh, also distracted and... Are you alright? I... It can this wait. This is a very serious moment, I think. Yes, absolutely. Let's go save our friend. And with that, we're going to take our five-minute break, guys. <laughs> we'll be back in five minutes. Um, so, that, you know, that way we as players can go do things that we need to go do. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Um, and we will continue with the drama and the excitement when we come back. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Sorry, I couldn't click the buttons to unmute us for some reason. Anyway, welcome back. We're going to pick up right where we left. Well, almost right where we left off, but we're going to pick up with Corvette. Oh, boy. <clears throat> Corvette, you awaken. <laughs> you find yourself. Excuse me. You find yourself in a cell. Is it big enough to stand in? Yes. Am I chained or anything, or is, am I just in a cell? You are chained, and on the chains you see some runes inscribed on the chains. Gosh dang it. Uh, can I understand them? Um, do you speak Draconic? No, I don't. Then you do not understand the runes. <laughs> Ooh. Did it, um... Did it happen to look like any of the runes I saw when, um... Oh gosh, what's his name? Fredo? Placed runes at my father's <laughs> office? Give me a... Intelligence check to recall that information. Okay. And that's a... Uh, what? 12. You're not certain. You know that they're magical, but because you have never had any formal magical training, you're not positive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you do get the feeling that your, that your magical powers are being suppressed, that you can't use your magic. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, I guess with that, I... Try and summon Elodin. Surprisingly, Elodin actually does show up. Hey. Well, at least you're here. How'd we get here? We were dragged here, dummy. What? Well, no, duh. Who? Obviously, my sister took us. Was there anyone else? Um. After. After. Uh. After your sister, you know stabbed you in the back and you know there Thanks. were some so some of the guards of your, your father's guards showed up and uh helped uh bring you here 
She uh, left some of them behind with explicit instructions to misdirect anyone who tried to find your find your whereabouts. After that, we got out of range. And I don't know what happened with the guards. I just know that it was a very bumpy ride in the back of a, a back of a wagon. They didn't even have the like decency to get us a carriage. She got a wagon and just bumped bumped it along. And of course, you had to have summoned me right before, and so my uh, you know spear was getting bumped around eventually when she activated the magic suppression i i disappeared but uh it's taken all my power to get here now unfortunately i'm not going to be of much else much other use which basically means eladin is unable to change shapes and eladin is only the equivalent of what a normal spear would be instead of oh, the usual crap. magicness <laughs> the spear of snark <laughs> it's like i see i'm rubbing off on you you like the finer things of life now I mean, no one likes getting bounced around like in the that. back of a cart. <laughs> People do it all the time. Doesn't mean they like it. Deal with it, so. Look, when no yeah. you spend most of your time floating around in the, um, in, in, in the veil as just magic energy, bumping around in a cart is not a pleasant experience. Hmm. What would you call a pleasant experience? Floating around in the veil is magical energy. I mean, having a body okay. is slightly more pleasurable than that, but... So... You, uh, got any plans to get us out of here? Working on it. <sighs> Looks like I'll... You're useless right now, apparently, so... Although, mm, are there any, like, keyholes holes on, like, the chains or anything like that that I can see? Nope. They're little magic chains. Gosh dang it. Uh, oh, and I can't even turn, I can't, I tried turning him into, like, a hammer. Nothing. Nothing. Like, you even uh, try turning him into a, a corkscrew for, for you to open your wine with. Nothing happens. Yes. Not even that, huh? working on it you become aware of another presence in the, oh, in the room you turn and you see Bronislav sitting behind you what a predicament you've gotten in yep it's okay yep this is all according to plan really Yes. We Why? You need to be here. I thought you said I had to be with my sister. You had to be here. Your sister was going to come here no matter what. You had to have... Uh, so you had to... Your sister needed to have brought you here. Uh, only hey. reason that we've the uh, only reason that I even know where this location is is because of my connection to you. I was able to use it to bring myself directly to you. I know that you're somewhere in the lower docks district of um the the city of Estrava, but that unfortunately is all I know. Hey, the magics here are doing a very good job of scrambling in my senses. It's very powerful magic. I don't want you to lose hope. Your sister isn't done yet. He reaches into his robes and um, pulls out this pendant, shaped like a uh, shaped like angel wings. And he holds it out to you. Your sister is possessed by something very dark, very evil, more ancient even the world itself. This will remove it from her. However, you must do it when the creature is weak. And it's weak when it's getting ready to feed. Okay. If you... Use this pendant. It will remove the, the the creature from your sister. 
and everything will be all right. You sure I'm supposed to be here? There was no other way. If you were not to be her victim tonight, someone else would have been. And then it would have been too late. The creature would have been too strong. And the death that your sister would bring across upon this world, upon the city, would be unstoppable. And the Dark One would rise again. Thank you. You're welcome. If she had been lost. <clears throat> is it the same thing that came over me? It is the exact same being that took you over. It left you when you did, did when you committed its murder. And journeyed north to Cordovan. Actually, sorry, I messed that up. It came from Cordovan and came to you because of time frames. However, a lot of appropriate time frames. It left you, and then joined you, and uh, joined with your sister. With your sister, your sister was a more viable host because of feelings of resentment and anger that she's been that she'd been feeling. We cannot let this being complete its transformation. I agree. When it is weak. When it is weak. When it's feeding. It does not feed on blood, meat, but on the very soul. You will know when it's trying to come. With that, I must leave. Our friend in the Infernal Realm broke a rule. He must be reprimanded. And as punishment for me breaking the rules, I, uh, the task lays to me to reprimand him. To use this artifact and everything will be alright. And with that, he disappears. You now hear Eldon's voice. So here's a different plan. Artifact will work well and good, I'm sure of it. But, how do you know that your uh, angel buddies wouldn't have put something in there to claim your sister's soul as their own? And in what way would they claim her as their own? You don't know the power of souls, do you? This entire, not. this entire conflict is about souls. Energy they provide. Strength. That beings of any form of divinity or power derive from them. Why do you think fey lords are obsessed with their deals and the souls they can claim through deals? Demons, their devils claiming souls through deals. Why do you think the... Um, Gods put such strict requirements on who gets to end up with them. They want the purest souls, the strongest souls. It's all about the souls. But I have a different plan. When you are about to deliver that, use that pendant. Call on me instead of the angels. Uh, I've been calling on you, and you can barely be a toothpick right now. In order to feed on your soul, they will most likely have to remove the bands. But you'll probably be in a situation where fighting back wouldn't necessarily be the best idea. And if they feed on you and remove your soul, well, you're no use to me anyway. I wouldn't be able to help. But if you call on me... 
when you're going to remove the soul. When they're going to remove your soul and uh, force that creature out. I'll promise you that you'll be free of the dragon goddess's control. And whatever plans that she might have of you, whatever ble her blessings might actually be. Your soul will be yours to do with it what you will. Cannot hear you, suddenly, Brain. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I'm just. <laughs> I am not vocally. <laughs> I'm mouthing my frustration. <laughs> Alright. And with that, we'll let you think on your choice. We're going to go back to your friends. <laughs> Alright. So. You guys make your way through the town. Really resisting there to just say downtown, because I know if I say downtown. Anyway, I said it anyway. Anyway, you make your way through town to the lower docks. Um, just be straight up honest. The lower docks, or the Ashen uh, District, as they are often called, is a crap hole. The buildings are the only, the, the nicest building is the church in, you know, but even then, the, the history of that church is that they built the churches over in the upper docks and the central district and then realized they had leftover materials. So they decided to build one for the in the lower docks. And so literally, like, the bricks don't match because it's two, the shingles don't match. Nothing matches because it's two different, you know, the, it was construction materials from two different projects that just weren't so, like, it... It, it is it is it is it is the ugliest place but that you've ever been. Think of it this way: in a thousand years, it's going to be a really hot tourist attraction. <laughs> that's because that's what we're concerned about right now: is tourist attractions <laughs> when your friend's soul is at stake. <laughs> we've always got to look at the bright side. And even if you guys try to dress not as well as you normally would. You guys still stick out here because your clothes are still in better condition than most of these people's here. Like, there are beggars sitting on the street, just, mm, alms, alms. And you hear shouting, and you hear in the distance in a marketplace, and you hear shouting, If you don't buy a pointy stick, your mom doesn't love you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just That's tons of things. Pointy stick. <laughs> Tons, tons of things, you know, just tons of shouting, and you know, it's just, it's, it, you know, and it's, it's crowded, you know, you, your guests, there's probably like three or four families per, you know, shack, you know, because that's the best description of these buildings, is shacks. How are you going to go about finding your friend? Can we sense... Like the aura from Eladin, like a detect magic. You want to cast no, detect magic? No, I don't have that spell. I was like, do nope. you? I was like, I don't think you have detect magic. We could just start going from hut to hut. And here's the question. Have? Do we want to be subtle or do we want to be fast? Um, I think we should go for a mix. Something in the middle. We obviously don't want to draw undue attention. <coughs> but we also don't want to lose our friend. While they're discussing this, Galena just starts her ritual to summon her familiar. Okay. So you immediately get tons of weird, strange glances as people, because they people have never seen magic before in their life, and they're just looking at you. And they're just like, "What is this?" Or like, like, "What the freak? What is going on?" Does anybody who like, gives the undue attention or like comes closer, I'm just gonna stare them down. Move on. Oh yeah, and they, 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 that that's not a problem because they every the moment people see magic, they just shoot bolt like the entire street is empty. You see a a beggar stand up, lift up a, you know whatever you know shawl he was using to um you know, 
hide himself, and he's what you, you thought he was a one-legged beggar because he just unfolds his other leg out of from somewhere that you had no idea, and he just starts sprinting with his crutch in hand, just running away, and uh, you just you know the the street is cleared. There's now no one around due to the display of magic, um, but it doesn't take very long after it's done for people to just kind of like start coming in with curious looks, just like looking around, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, there are, you know, the few guards that are in this section of town make their way towards you. Uh, one of them approaches. Um, excuse me, there's been a, a few complaints. Of what? Really? About what? Magic use. Why? I mean, there are people who are concerned. They are worried that the magic is going to cause harm in some way. I, I don't know. Uh, oh, but do you see that cute little furry squirrel? It is quite adorable. I summoned him. That's all I did. D don't worry, sir. Um... <laughs> We're professionals. Um, so no harm will befall anyone at our hands. Conviction in your voice is amazing. Because <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I don't know if I want to go this route, but then it came out of my mouth. So I was like, I am now committed. <laughs> you are committed. He lifts his hands up. If you say so, you're, you're, if you're professionals, I, I will trust you. Just please don't go burning down any of the buildings there flammable enough as his. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, we're we're here for a very urgent purpose. Um, kidnapping, abduction, murder, you know. Look. Have you seen anything suspicious today? I seen anything here suspicious. I am doing, my, doing your job directly to you. Yes. Uh, how have you been today? I have saw a man suspicious? just grow a leg and run down the road. Have I seen anything suspicious? <laughs> You should probably be able to tell the difference if you're a guard. There's so much stuff that happens here. I mean, the most suspicious thing I saw was this woman. She clearly didn't belong here, and I only got a glimpse of her briefly under the hood that she was wearing. But she, she was had a donkey pulling a cart, and she, you know, just you could tell just by the fact that you know she was very clean. Otherwise, besides the clothes she was wearing and the way her hair was done, she wasn't from around here. Show us where. She went points up the street, and she uh, last I saw it, they were she was uh, headed north to the. She was headed north towards the towards the Yield Flame Inn. Okay. They stopped there, pulled out some cargo out of the back of the cart, and unloaded it. Right. Thank you for your help. Maybe You're you should send a few men to just wait outside in case help is needed. May I ask who you are again? I don't think you asked the first time, so... Well, asking I'm asking now. Would be pointless, and I walk away. <laughs> looks at, me. Look, he looks at Galena and Piotr. She must be a joy to work with. Oh, you have <laughs> no idea. And then Piotr <laughs> just walks on by. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Galena. It was nice meeting you. And then she walks off. <laughs> Galena is the best. Yes. Right. Okay. You make your way north to Yield Flame Inn. It's a ramshackle place. With a uh You're guessing that Yield Flame Inn is the name that's been given because there are no words on its sign, just the very worn and faded picture of a flame. Um so you're guessing you're at the right spot. 
but you're not positive, of course, obviously, because, you know, no words. Um, <laughs> as most of the people in this district probably don't read. You... Are you going to head inside, or what are you going to do once you arrive to the inn? We can kind of pull up short before we fully go inside. Obviously, this is not the sort of place that I'm used to being in. I don't really know what to do, so... Unless there's a better idea, I'm literally just going to go in and start kicking down doors. Um, uh, Patrick. Yes, Piotr. Uh, wow, that would be... If I just talked to you directly as Piotr, that would be really fourth wally. Mm -hmm. Um, can I... I'm assuming I can do this. Okay, Piotr is going to bestow Bardic Inspiration on his friends before they go in. Tell me how you are bardically inspiring them. <laughs> we know how good I am at that on the spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> friends. Galena. Anya. Okay, okay. I thought you were excluding her from the te from the description of friends. <laughs> For a second, I was going to leave it there. Then I was like, no, that's we not two are friends, and then there's you. <laughs> and I said friends, plural. Anyway. Um, <laughs> our friend is in there. He needs our help. I know I've been in a funk today. I apologize. But I want you to know that you have my metaphorical loot to strengthen your strides and make true your arrows, bolts, and whatever else you happen to throw. Anyway, be careful in there. Here's your 2024, everyone. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Are we just walking in? Um, that's, I, that's what I want to do, but I'm not thinking very clearly. I'm very upset. Okay. Patrick, what? are there like windows or any? Is there like another way yeah, of windows. approach here? There's windows. Also, I have detect magic. Okay, there are windows. Just what were you gonna say, Sarah? Would you like me to send Luchik in? He has a really good sense of smell. That might be a good idea, actually. Um, because you can see through his eyes too, right? Oh, I was just gonna have him talk to me. Oh, well, what a, any way we can kind of get a feel for the situation in there would be great. Tell him to be so careful. These people look hungry enough to kill and eat the squirrel. Oh, he would disappear the moment they killed him. Which would be unfortunate for both of us. I can call him back, but he doesn't like it when people kill him. <laughs> he prefers not death. So, Luchik, make sure you stay hidden, but go scout out the building. Luchik. Smell for Corvette. Luchik nods and then heads towards the building. Roll me a stealth and perception check for Luchik. Ah. Hold up his stats so now I know what my squirrel can do. <laughs> It's 19 on his stealth. Yeah. And 12 on his perception. All right. So Luchik goes inside um, and begins, you know, looking around. Um, you're not seeing through his eyes. You're just waiting for him to talk to you. Okay. So, um, you, so yeah, you're not really sure what the inside looks like. You, Get um, every you know he starts getting distracted by the smells of the kitchen, but you you know manage to get him back on course, um, and it does take a while. No one no one really seems to notice him, but it does take a and it does take a while. But he does catch the scent of Corvet. Um, it's headed back towards the kitchens that he so desperately wanted to explore before. Jelania. He says he can smell Corvette. 
in the direction of what I'm guessing is the kitchen because he keeps mentioning food smells. Okay. That is somewhat helpful. I couldn't, I can try to disguise myself like some, like that one-legged person that we saw. We want to try and sneak in. I don't know who they would let into the kitchens, though. They would probably not let anyone in that they don't recognize, I would assume. You could disguise yourself like a serving wench? But would, they would need to, I would assume they'd want to recognize whoever it is. We could lure one of the serving wenches out, hold on to them, I can swap. I don't know how we will get one to come out. But, you know. Uh, can I use minor illusion to create a sound that would prompt them to what, come out what type of sound would you want to like tell me what the sound would be because there is a lot of noise you know it isn't in you know tavern that you know, is fairly busy um as it would be the only one that the people here could generally afford um so you just would need to you know as well as there are sounds happening outside. So what type of sound would you want to lure people out? Uh, or like the smell of a, of a fire. Minor illusion, it smells. Good question, I should look it up. I think so, but I'm not. Oh, it can be either a sound or an image, not a smell. Uh, what about the image of a fire? Sure. Um, the image would only be a five foot cube, um, but that's fine. I'm I would assume like a five foot cube. Everybody or just the one person? That's true. Because mm. we could we could make a big enough ruckus to get everybody out and slip in during the confusion, or we could be a little stealthy and try and swap somebody. That is, which would. Swapping me only gets me in, doesn't get everyone else in. Yeah, so that might be the better route to go anyway. We could just, literally set the inn on fire. The guard I don't just told us this. not <laughs> to. Just, I, it from this just escalates nothing. every step. <laughs> it's just like, mm, fake fire? No. Real fire. He also doesn't fire. know who we are. We didn't tell him our names. Oh. Or at least I didn't. I only told him my first name. <laughs> he didn't tell me not to tell people my name. Yeah, it's okay. We'll draw up some roles for later, but... Piotr has, tells has experience people... of telling people his name. <laughs> Piotr I tells can't... people his name, and he's wanted. Uh, yep, bad idea. He also on my sings part. in the middle of a fight, so what, his level of subtlety is different than the rest of ours. <laughs> it's just true. like doing like this. <laughs> like... He's a bard. What can you expect? I could just walk in the door and wait for one of the serving wenches to get near the door and then grab her hand with both my hands and say, My friend outside needs help and yank her out the door. Um, I feel like. Google? Say Google. Doable. Sorry, I'm Russian. <laughs> it still sounds like Google. <laughs> or we could be overthinking Google. this. Maybe we um, should go in and order a drink and watch the kitchen for a minute and then just get up and walk in. I mean, we are extremely noticeable. Yeah, I mean, we've already done magic, so I feel like pretty much everybody here has been alerted to our presence. Maybe there's a back door that we could get into the kitchens from the back. We don't no, have I to can't. have everybody see us. Yeah, I can't. Well, okay. So let's surreptitiously check the other sides of the building. And then if there is a door in the back, I propose 
that I make them think there's a fire on the opposite side of the building, then we sneak in. But okay. let's see if there's a door first. Yes. There is a door. Cool. <laughs> Figured it I wasn't know. that hard to find. <laughs> I was like, I don't think we should have to roll for this. You're looking right at it, but it's a nat one, so you don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Piotr does some armwormy things and conjures a fake fire on the opposite side of the building. Okay. It doesn't take very because it's only sound. I feel like one of us would probably go stand on the other side, and, like yell "fire" or something to like get people's attention. Mm. It's not a noisy fire, right? Yeah, because you can either create sound or you can create an image. You're just creating the image of a fire. Or you're creating sound. Yeah, of fire. just the image. Okay. All right. Because you would think, because you would think, generally speaking, even if it were a fire of that size, if the if it's an inful of people, they wouldn't expect to hear it in any way until they went outside. Yeah. Also, people oh, are scared of magic, apparently. So if it's a magical silent fire, that's kind of freaky, too. Yeah. Although, if you want it to have sound, I can coordinate with you and it can have sound. Yolina, you magic woman. <laughs> I mean, that would make it more convincing. Okay. I know what fire sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. All right. So you cast the fire, and you know, so you cast the, it's the, is it two minor illusions at once? Or, okay, so you cast two minor illusions at once, creating a fire, the, and the, you know, the image of fire and the sound of fire, and then Jelanya shouts fire, and it doesn't take very long for the people in the tavern to rush outside with buckets of water and start throwing it on this illusionary fire. They're not noticing, of course, that there isn't actually any heat to it, they're just throwing buckets on uh <clears throat> there's throwing buckets um on the uh yeah throwing buckets on the of the fi on on the fire and um you guys sneak in the back can I get stealth checks show uh, can you have uh -huh. advantage because of the distraction yeah Thirteen. Thirteen, Piotr. Eighteen. Also, you have Bardic Inspiration. What'd you get? Uh, Twenty-two. Twenty-two. All right. So you are able to sneak inside, and you know, it doesn't take you very long at all. You arrive, and you know you are in the kitchen, and you notice a cook. You see, he's still sitting there stewing, some, stirring some stew. He looks up at you. Looks back down. Do whatever you gotta do. Just know. You owe me 50% of whatever it is. <laughs> Whoa, um, turning down that offer right now, you should leave. He looks at you. Why? You don't need to know. I mean, intimidation check. Okay. Um, that's not really that great. I think it's like a ten. Um, can yeah, I give her advantage? Tell me what you're doing By to give her advantage. Glowering menace menacingly. <laughs> well, we also have someone in the chat who's saying they want to give advantage. They dropped a hundred bits earlier. We didn't give you advantage. Hey, that's a natural 20. So 22. That'll... <laughs> so I will use, like, thaumaturgy to, like, make, like, the, like, tremors and thunder and, like, ominous whispers. And my eyes, instead of red, go, like, full black. Just use all of it. The whole shebang. He drops the, uh... He, he drops the, you know, the... Um, what, you know, drops whatever, you know, he's using to stir the stew, and he looks at you and goes... Oh, whatever. I they don't pay me enough to ask questions, and he just walks out of the kitchen. You find Luchik there, sitting there munching on a carrot. 
Boy, Luchik. Where does the smell lead you from here? Luchik hops down off the shelf and then walks over to the, uh, <clears throat> to a trap door. A trap door. A trap door. Not a trapped door. At least as far as you know. But a trap <laughs> it's door. It's stuck. It can't get out. It's fallen and it can't get up. There we're, we go. It's referring more to the deadly kinds of traps, but... For that kind, too. But yeah, so it's the, he leads you to the trap door that he obviously can't open himself. So. Speaking of traps, should we check it for... We can check it for traps? Deadly things? <laughs> I'll take his stunned silence for a yes. <laughs> you do what you want to do. I'm not going to stop you. you I wanna... wasn't going to until he said it was a trapped door, so I'm not going to metagame. <laughs> Although I now am reminded that traps exist. You, uh, If you want to check for traps, you can give me a perception check or an investigation mm -hmm. check. Uh, do do do. Oh, ho, 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 ho. nat 20. Yeah, there's no traps <gasps> on the door. There are? <laughs> there are no traps on the door. Dang it. All right, at least we're super aware. Yeah. You are very aware of the fact that there are no traps on that trap door. <laughs> nope, definitely zero traps. Cool. Um, Piotr, wait. Mm, no, I'm metagaming. Piotr opens the trap door. All right, there is a ladder descending down into what you assume is the cellar. Okay. Just like very very quick glance with my dark vision because I can see in there. Does it, is it how big is the room? How big is the space? Not very big from what you can see. But you'd have to get down in there to be able to see more of it because you and obviously only see the square that goes the square pit that goes into it, and so you can't really, you know, craning your head, you can't really see how big it is. Uchik, go down. Tell me if it's safe at the bottom. Luchik scrambles down the ladder and looks around. You just see a bunch of crates, barrels, some um, herbs hanging and you know drying from the um, ceiling. Nothing else. It looks pretty safe. Okay, Piotr is going to cast Dancing Lights. Okay. So that he can friggin' see. You cast... Um, Dancing lights, and there is no, and you, yep, you just see the same things that Luchik saw. Okay, uh, well, Can so Luchik is there, smell again? is it just a room? Is there a corridor? Oh, it's just a room, it's just a cellar, as far as you can tell. Hmm. Piotr is going to investigate to see if he can find anything. Loose bricks. So are you places. actually going down in there now? Uh, that's an ominous, almost like a dare. Well, I'm just, because, like, if you want to go look for that kind of stuff, you've got to be in the the basement. I'm trying to make sure that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That where, was my idea. That okay. was my idea. <laughs> trying to make sure that we're matching up like, on where you're standing. Okay. I was like, that sounded like... Do you want me to like go a... first? <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, uh, I mean... I feel bad letting you do that, but you're less Why? squishy than I am. I'm stronger than you. You, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just like, it's like, oh, it's fine. You go and potentially get stabbed instead of me. It's just, you know, it doesn't, it's not very altruistic. But yes, all that? things yeah, considered. A you are plenty altruistic, Piotr. You keep an eye on me, make sure nothing gets me when I'm not looking. Will do. I'll go down as the apparent tank that we have. With my uber tons of hit points <laughs> that I have. Alright. Go on down. Mm-hmm. Alright. Nothing happens to you. Okay. Ronimo. Okay. Then Piotr Seems comes okay. down 
and he's gonna do some investigation. All right, you can either roll <laughs> perception or investigation checks. Cool, cool. I can't remember which one was better. I'll. Okay, so I got a 19. Okay. All right. Um, so as you're looking around investigating with the combination of, you know, your friends helping you with their dark vision slash your dancing lights, you do come to a, you know, a, a, a brick wall, and you notice on the dirt floor that there's very obvious sliding marks like something's been sliding back and forth along on on that along that dirt wall um you does so, it sorry go ahead no you go ahead i was gonna say does like does it lead anywhere like obviously there's been sliding is it just contained well, so it, it looks like it... the sliding's coming out from the wall Okay. Can I investigate the wall to see if there's like a loose brick or something? Sure. Seventeen. Okay. Um. Yeah, you find a loose brick that, as you pull it, the wall slides, swings open. You see a secret passageway. Mm, not ominous. I mean, I think that's very ominous. <laughs> well, I guess we've only got one way forward at this point. Do we close the trap door behind us? Do we assume that we will want people to come help us and find us? Um, I don't know who we can trust here. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Oh, that's a very good point. I say close it. By the time anyone could hear us screaming or find us, we'd be dead anyway. It won't matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Peter goes up the ladder or whatever the heck and closes the trap door. Okay. Are you going through the secret passage or what? And now? Uh, now they're playing patty cake. <laughs> Stop to do some Enjoy. tic tac toe. Um, so. I think we need to sneak down this passageway. I really don't want to get jumped, and I'd really like to get the jump on whatever's going on. So, what I would like to do is kind of, like, go first. I guess if Blue Chick wants to go first, maybe we... that is also fine. Do but we need to turn... I... Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Do we need to turn off lights? Probably will. Yeah. Um, but I can cast detect thoughts for like a minute as we feel like maybe we're coming up on something i can try and be like there's people around but it only lasts one minute so i want i don't want to waste it is it a cantrip what is it it's one of my tiefling abilities it's a second level spell that i can do once a day last one minute oh so we have to be very strategic we can send um, the chick up on ahead. He's pretty sneaky and little. And then from there, we can identify if we need to use it at certain junctures. Okay, yeah, I like that idea. And right. we can turn the lights off and she looks at Piotr for a minute. He can put his hand on my shoulder so he doesn't trip in the dark. <laughs> if he can't see you, will he have issues? If the lights are off. But if oh, he can no. touch me, he knows that I'm in front of him. Right. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. 
Well, either way, I'm not leaving the lights on to let them know we're coming. So if it's going to exactly. happen, you're going to have to suck it up. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was going to say. Like, the worst case scenario is not worse than the best case scenario if we leave the lights on. So I say I deal with it. All right. The plan is Luchik walks ahead, followed by Jelania, then Galena and Piotr with the on the hand on Galena's shoulder and no lights. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So the moment the lights go off, Piotr, I need a wisdom saving throw. Oh, oh no. no. <sighs> What'd you get? <laughs> what was the DC for this again? It's a DC 15. <laughs> And he didn't um, succeed it at any point last night. Oh, no. I got a 12. All right, you take 10 points of psychic damage. Holy jeez. Oh, <laughs> All right. Do you, keep, do you use bigger dice over time for this? No, it's always been 2d10. Oh, that's you so many. 2d10? That's so many. <laughs> You, you said half his health in one said shot. Ten points of damage, yes. Ten points okay, of damage. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Okay. The lights go off. Galena is like, Pewter, how do you feel? Not so great, but I'm um, still alive. So that's preferable to what would probably happen otherwise. Oh, so it didn't work. That's good to know for the future. Yeah. Do you have? Do you get a headache every day. time you like turn the lights off to go to sleep at night, or do you have a night light and you sleep um, with your eyes open? I think usually I fall asleep so fast that it doesn't matter. That's a really interesting <laughs> question for the next time we see a Fey Lord or whatever to ask them how that all works. Probably, we'd probably have to ask Maeve since she's the one that burdened me with this particular mm. yeah we probably need to get this checked out like this is a problem <laughs> now um, but we should go alright move on listening super hard for any noise and yeah, yeah. So you're going to make your way through the tunnel. Um, you, as you look at the tunnel, and you know, so those of you, those of you with dark vision, so uh, Galena and Jelani, as you're looking, as you make your way further in, you eventually see, um, like, minecart tracks. Um, and on the tracks, you see these little, these runes inscribed in the tracks. Does anyone here speak Draconic? Uh, nope. Mm -hmm. This is the first game I've ever played where no one speaks Draconic. That's crazy. Alright, so, you don't know what these runes on the minecart track says, uh, but you do see these minecart tracks. So, the tunnel slopes down and then eventually curves and turns back around, still sloping down, before straightening out and then going straight. Um, and you are walking for what feels like hours um just forever like literal hours um at one point you're in this tunnel you feel water dripping down from you hear water and feel water dripping down from the ceilings and landing on your head and you're guessing that you might be passing under the river at some point you've been walking for a very long time um, <clears throat> Wait, how long? Like, probably like a good two, three hours. We'll have to stop after every hour and resummon Luchik then. Okay. Definitely can do that. So, um, you probably, yeah, you have to resummon Luchik twice. Um, and, but eventually, you come, what you see in the distance, faint torchlight.
Um... Okay. Need to get closer. See if I can hear someone thinking. Okay. Donnie, I need a wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Okay. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good. That's a, f that's a full on five. Oh. The mind that you touch is completely and utterly alien. It doesn't even like you've touched animals before. It doesn't even feel animal. It is just, you know, the only the only way to describe it is alien. It's just so bizarre that its thought patterns aren't even anywhere near anything what you're used to, and you just get the urge you are you're frightened you just get the urge to turn and run because this mind is just so you know overwhelming um with its strength and its power um and it's it's alienness you just you feel like i need to you you just you 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 feel terror through every fiber of your being mm -hmm. um jelani probably like like lifts up her sleeve to like bite down on it so she doesn't scream and at this point because of all the tension and like worry that she has for corvid there's definitely like tears coming now um and she full backs up away so you guys notice Ch -ch that Jelania is you know in getting getting ready to retreat yeah um Pieter grabs her by the arms and Anya, 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 what's what's going on? It's not something that we... It's too big, whatever it is, not something that we can handle. Okay, do we need to hide? Um, I don't, I don't know if it noticed me, it's, but I, uh, I don't, I don't know. So are you saying we need to leave? No. <sighs> yeah, you're you're definitely trying to urge them to leave. Yeah. Just how terrified it, you are. It's I don't think we can do anything about this. Um. That's it? We're just gonna turn around and walk away? We've been walking for hours. Um, you can give me another wisdom saving throw at this point, Jelania. Okay. That's a three. Okay, you're still frightened. There's, there's no point in walking into something when we're just going to die no matter what. Anya, that's not... That's not who we are. It's not... What's... Uh, I don't... Uh, do you know what you saw? What you felt? No. Not in any way. Something that's beyond us. It's... Remember what I... What? Remember what I said out there? Friend needs us. If we turn back now, whatever's between us and Corvid has free reign potentially over him and, and who knows who else or what else. In conjunction. We need to take courage. Alright, give me a wisdom saving throw with advantage. Okay, there's a 17 in there. 
Okay. You are yeah. good. You feel yourself calming down, Piotr and Galena's words relaxing you. Okay. I still don't think that we should run into it, obviously, but we can't leave him in there with whatever that is. We should be sneaky then. Sneaky's good. I couldn't sense Corvette in there, could I? At all? You did not sense Corvette. Okay. Give me... Alright, um... Okay, give me stealth checks. Thirteen. Thirty-twenty. Uh... Fourteen. So you make your way in towards, you know, you as you get closer, you see that there is just this big, this, this opening um, that the tracks led to. And at the end of the tracks, you see a mine cart. Um, your guess is that's probably what they use for quick transportation back and forth between wherever these, this, these, this, wherever this leads and the uh, yield flame in. Um, as you poke your head around the corner, you see the thing that I just popped up on screen. Um... You recognize it as one of the things that you fought in Norgarn when you were fighting the dragon, so for Jelanya and Pyotr. Um, you know, so it's basically, you know, for those of us who get the listening audience, it's this insect-like creature that's down on six legs and it has these two giant spiky blades on its, uh, on its back. And it's just sitting there and kind of twitching and chittering. And... Um, <clears throat> It turns, and if it had eyes, they would be looking directly at Jelanya. And you feel the alien mind try to touch your 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 thought process, your thought it's again. Um And I need you to roll initiative. Three of you. No. Oh. So it was, uh, Jelania, what'd you get? 23. Yoter, what'd you get? 16. Okay, and then Galena, what'd you get? 8. 8. Okay. All right. I heard you say something, but then I did. I just didn't catch it. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, Jelania, you were first. Um, so Jelania, like, stops dead and stares this thing down and really considers just turning and running. <laughs> um, then she, you know, reminds herself of what Piotr just told to her and that Corvette really, really needs all of us. She's just gonna, she's gonna freaking charge um, at this, this thing. <laughs> This is so bad. I've got three attacks that I can do. Um, two with the Dragon Slayer Longsword, and then one with the Silvered One. Okay. Roll the hit. Uh, uh, the lowest one is an 18. Okay. That will hit. Okay. And no crits. I'm just rolling dice out. Okay. Oh my gosh, if I could roll better for damage, that would be great. Um, but I do get an automatic plus 16 to all that damage together. So that is in total 22 points of magical slashing damage. Okay. Magical or, or silver. All right. Hey, roll your nice attack. Oh no, that was all. Three oh, that was all three. Together. Okay, perfect. yeah, that was all three of them. I wanted to lump them. If you don't want me to do that in the future, no, I you're will good. That. Sorry, I was looking at the stat block of the thing at the same time and thinking about 
how much damage you dealt to it. So no, you're good. So that's all three. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Okay, that would be Piotr. Okay. Um. Well, the first thing Piotr is going to do is cast Dancing Lights. Okay. Um. Is there torchlight in here? Actually? There is torchlight. Oh, never mind. We won't waste that bonus action. Um. Piotr is going to cast Bane, and I always forget what that does. I just know that I want to do it. Okay, that means it's the opposite of Bless, so I would roll a d4 and subtract that from um, certain actions. But they do yeah. need to do you make a wisdom saving throw versus My your spell DC. DC. Yeah. Okay, I got... A eight definitely failed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me fish out my D four. No, I roll that whenever I make an action. So at this point, there isn't really oh, anything else okay, to do. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So the creature is going to dig down um, into the ground. Um, you can take an opp- attack opportunity if you'd like, Shalanya. Do it. Um. Yeah. I'll do that. That's a natural 20. Ooh. All right. In fact. Roll your crit. Trying to see if there's anything that I could do to, like, add something onto it. I don't think so. All right. Uh, 11 <laughs> points of damage. Okay. Still standing. It burrows. You watch it burrow down into the ground, and then it pops up behind um, Piotr and attacks Piotr. <laughs> hey, Betty. Yeah. All right, that's Rude. going to be. Uh, I am going to uh, cutting words. Okay, roll your d8 so I can track that. You're not gonna make me insult him. Tell me how you're gonna insult a thing with an alien mind. I'd like. I'd like to see what you say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he won't care, but I kind of think he looks like Kabu Tops. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's six. Okay. All right. So he definitely misses because um, he yes. got a twelve after all the math. Um, he's gonna make his second multi his multi attack. So his second attack against you. What is your AC? Oh. Low enough that he probably hit me. Uh, da, 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 da. It is 14. Okay, I rolled 14. Oh. That is going to hit you for... Wow. Uh, that's going to be 14 points of piercing damage as he bites into your leg. 14? Oh, yep, 14. I don't like that. <laughs> Alright. That brings our turn to our lovely Galena. She was right next to Pewter, so she's gonna get as far away from that evil bug as she can without taking up her action. Okay. That's a good thing your movement is separate from your regular action. So, okay. Move away. Um, mm-hmm. It will not take an attack of opportunity against you. Yay for me. <laughs> and then... She will cast haste on Shalanya. Huh? Shalanya, you feel hasted. And mm-hmm. bonus action, she's gonna pull it five feet away from Pewter. <laughs> you just reach out your hand, yank, and you watch the, the thing. I have to make a saving throw, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, where I can click that. Well, is it a strength saving throw or what type of saving throw is it? I'm trying to find where I have. You're good. Telekinetic shove. Here's the thing. There it is. Okay, it is a strength. Strength. Okay, perfect. All right, I got a thirteen. 
I'm guessing I failed. It's your spell save DC, so eight plus your proficiency plus your intelligence score. Okay, so it flies five feet away from um, from Piotr. All right, that brings it back to Jelania. All right, just gonna chase after it. Get a flanking bonus with uh, with Piotr, who's still right next to it. He just got pushed five feet away. Oh wait, so he's he got not. pushed. All right, it's fine. I, I have four attacks. I assume <laughs> I assume they're gonna land. Okay. <laughs> um, there's an eleven, a fourteen, <laughs> and two twenty sixes. Yeah, the twenty sixes hit. Those are both with the dragon slayer. Oh, that's almost max damage. So that's 23 points of magical slashing damage. Okay, it's still up. Um, right. Then I'm going to action surge and do another two attacks. Okay. Um, a 14 and a 22. All right. So only the one hits, right? Yep, only the one hits. All right, that's nine more points of damage. Right, tell me how you did it. Um, I think the ability to make uh, what seven attacks in six <laughs> seconds. She's just like full like panic mode frenzying, just mindless stabbing at this thing. Not any sort of like elegant form or whatever. Just like full, full panic. All right, so it, you know, so you just stab it. You watch as this kind of like green goo comes out of the wounds as it just falls limp. Um, and the creature before you is dead. Ooh, very clearly uh, shaking, breathing very heavy, and tears for sure. Piotr walks over. Uh, are you, are you okay? No. Do you expect me to be okay? No. Uh, well. Me... No. Sorry. It. You're fine. I'm. I. I'm sorry. You've always been very. You've been very. Um. You've offered to help me so many times, and I've pushed you away. And no. Um, no. It's. I mean. It, I get it. It's a weird question. Like. Obviously, you're not you're having a rough time. I just, I don't, I'm here, is what I mean to say. Thank you. Um, we should go, though. Yeah. Um, Piotr is going to cast Healing Word as a second level spell on himself. Because your boy's about dead. Not really. Wait a second. Do I even need to do this? I need to double check. No, I'm just panicking. I'm not going to do that yet. Okay. All right. You're going to make your way further in wherever you are. Orbit, back to you. Finally. It's been several hours. It's been sitting down there. Thinking to in yourself. real life or in the game? In the game. <laughs> <laughs> in the game. And real I life. Mean, <laughs> it is he has been sitting there since 7 15 p.m. Utah time. He's <laughs> just <laughs> I mean anyway, sorry. Anyway, um so you're going so you're just been sitting there thinking. And finally, someone comes to your door. You recognize the familiar purple robes and the silver mask. Of the profane guard. Hey, yeah, hmm. this profane guardsman opens the door. It says, "Stand." Yeah. Why? <laughs> the time has come. You are to feed, the master's child. Oh, that ain't creepy at all. <laughs> Don't you have any, you know, nicer hobbies to do? He, the 
Profane Guard holds up his hand and you see fire appear in it. Stand, or he will eat, or the master will feed on burnt flesh in, in, in combination with your soul. You're in no position to fight. <sighs> yep. You've got that right. And I stand and stretch. Ugh. You don't happen to be Elenov, do you? No. You'll meet him soon enough. Oh, good. I've always wanted to see him again. Only you knew. Walks over and he um, touches some of the... Uh, he touches he touches a few of the runes and the uh, on the chain and the chain detaches from the wall. It's still around your hands, but he's holding the chain now and he's pulling you. He says, Come on! All right. <sighs> you were you there in Arthmail? <sighs> the profane guardsman looks at you. Why bother with these questions when your life is about to come to an end? I mean, you know, there's always questions you want to know before you die, right? But why not? No, I was not at Arthmail. I recommend that you keep your mouth silent. Master, the master's child would not will not care if there was a few holes inside you. Mm. Doesn't seem like a patient one. All right. Well. I feel sorry for you for getting into all this, but hopefully you, uh, I don't know, make it out all right. Die for hopefully the dark one is, the die for the dark one is, would be a glorious death. Hmm. Definitely be a death, but. <laughs> Shots we'll fired. <laughs> all right. You make your way into the, um, you make your way into the, 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 in, in, you know, that through some tunnels. Um, looking around, you can see that this was definitely designed as a prison, um, long time ago. Um, your guess, so your, your best guess is that you're in a prison somewhere. Um, you make your way through and you, um, <clears throat> You're led to this giant chamber. Um, in the center of this chamber is a an altar, that uh, you know, kind of like the altars you've seen. However, there's not the familiar circle, so it's clear this isn't necessarily a sacrifice, not one of the sacrifices. Um, but you do see, um, stand, you know, you see standing another purple robed figure, standing at the uh, at the altar, and then you see a um, and then you see standing around the room more profane guardsmen, but you also see more of those little bug things that had, that they just fought, as well as you see some other things that are standing up taller. Um, they have bug, you know, they have insect-like features, um, but their their heads. Um, here, let me just see if I can get. A, I have a picture of it. I just let me pull a picture of it real quick. <laughs> Um, but, 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 sorry, it'll take me just a second to get it. Should have had this prepared, I apologize. Yeah, that. That's what Ooh. it looks like. Ah. <laughs> um, there's, a ah. Few of, there's, a <laughs> there's a few of these standing around the room. Um, and... They these stand up straight. They have these, you know, you know, sinewy wings. Um, yeah, and these tentacles coming out of their face, but you know, hard chitin-like skin. And um, they're yeah, they are standing around, getting you know ready to, you know, just looking kind of very menacingly. And the person, yeah, you know, the profane guardsman. Um, puts you onto the onto the altar and you watch the other profane guardsman turns around and you see the face of your sister. 
Hello there. Not Tatiana. Oops. Figured it out, have you? I know my sister doesn't like me much, but this is a bit far for her. You'd be correct. See, after we needed someone who was less divinely protected. For some reason, the seer in the north, the gods had big, had a huge interest in them, and the seer, and then you, of course, with your dragon touched, well, uh, daring touched blessings. Your sister was the perfect target, weak, and just oh, so much anger and resentment. It made her perfect being to take over. Yeah, of course, I, I wasn't able to fully take over until recently, for it was like you. I could take over at times when I was stronger, and this allowed me to feed, building my strength. And, but, with all the lost souls here in the city, in the city of Ashrava, I've able to feed so much and gain so much strength that your sister's body is almost mine and I am about ready to make my last trans my final transformation well I hope it surely doesn't make you turn into one of these tentacle faces here because that's just not a good look on you I would be so, would be so much more than these lowly squag and thrankir I will be a exactly tree. what I said. I will be um, the gr one of the greatest of my father's children. Well, um, before I pass, I'd like to have the courtesy of knowing who it is I am. I once helped feed with, and am now being fed to. You know me as Elenov. My real name is not such. You would not understand my real name. You could not pronounce it if you even tried. You, you, you mortals give us names that you, that you can comprehend to try to put sense to that which makes none, to understand that which cannot be understood. I think we can understand you more than you imagine. You want power, you want control. You, you think that this is all freedom. power and control? You think that's what we really desire? You want freedom, you want independence, you want to be your own person. I simply wish to eat. And... Fair. See, was that that hard to describe? But there's so much more to it than that. So much more. <sighs> Why me? As your final victim here to seal your ascent. Your sister has been a good host. I figured that the last thing that I could give her was would be the joy and pleasure of ending the brother who caused her so much heartache's life. It was only fitting. I was going to eat something, I was going to eat something else, but then you just came and you were so pleading. You wanted to make amends so badly. This couldn't help, but... Just make you can take and help it. It would be such a, a delicious meal. Knowing that you're with the end of your life, your sister's life was also ending as well. And then I would be finish my transformation and I would lead the armies of this profane guard and the scrawl across this land to reawaken my father and finish what he started so long ago. Well, 
Good luck with that. And... So, am I, am I on the altar thing yes, already? Yes, you're on the altar. Am I sitting, lying? Lying down, on your back. Okay. Then I just kind of, with my chains, just like... Rot in oblivion! And then hold them out to him. Uh, Elinov points at the uh, guardsman. Unbind him that I may feast. The guardsman bows low. Twist and, you know, and, and, and touches and mutters a few words and the um and he watches the you know the um chains fall from your and the manacles fall from your your wrists and um <clears throat> he bow and Elinov bows over you and you watch as your sister as your sister's mouth opens and but you see this yawning dark void in place of where her tongue should be and you watch as you feel your mouth compelled to open and you watch as silvery wisps of light begin to exit your mouth I need you to give me a, an attack roll me to give to, him yes, you to give him attack roll to be able to successfully hit and land with this pendant alright what do I do? What do I add to my um, modifier? Do I add anything, or is it just a straight roll? Do um, I use like my? Can add either your strength or dexterity. Because I was a hexblade warlock, I use my charisma. <laughs> I got an eight. All right. You take ten points of psychic damage. Give me another attack roll. Five. You take 15 points of psychic damage. Give me another attack roll. Okay. We're good, we're good. Who do you call upon as you strike? Oh, okay. oh. <laughs> That was almost out of my help. <laughs> um. So where is? I'm on the altar. I just want to get the lay of the land real fast. The my sister plus the creepy thing standing over me, and is like the other profane guardsman like next to me. Yes. On the other side of the altar or something. Mm -hmm. In that moment, feeling the life being, the soul being drawn out of me, hoping and knowing this is the moment um, that Bronislav talked about, I summon Elodin one hand and from my waistband of my pants, in the other, pull out the pendant, and I attack the other profane guardsman. Hopefully, he dies for you know his cause with Elodin, and shove the pendant at my sister, hoping just touching her will work. So, just to make sure I understand, you're using or, you're calling upon Elodin. No, I'm calling upon Elodin. To swing at the other profane guardsman first, I'm using the pendant to attack this thing. As you attack, the you watch as Elodin pierces through the profane guardsman, and the profane guardsman doubles over, and dies, but Elodin disappears. You feel fiery angel wings appear on your back. And your sister, you, know, you watch as your sister rolls over onto her, onto her back, and you watch as the, and you see that every single you hear, in, you hear her scream, but you don't just hear the scream in your ears; you hear it in your mind. And you watch as all the insect-like creatures around the room start writhing in pain with this scream, and. 
you watch as, you know, this purple worm thing crawls out of your sister's mouth and lands, and you watch it disintegrate in divine flame. May you rot in oblivion forever. I look around. What? Are all the other profane guardsmen up? All, doing... the, all these you've watched as these you surprisingly these these creatures have started turning on each other and have started like tearing each other to shreds. Your sister is laying on the ground, unconscious. I dive over to her and grab her and pick her up. And whisper to her, it's not your fault. We're getting out of here. Alright. Begin to run through. And... That's where we're going to call it for this session. I hate you! Oh. <laughs> Alright. We don't even get another to half hour. Just United or half anything? Hour. Yeah! We just got in a whole bunch of people watching. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, we just need to call it there. Hey, yes. <laughs> uh... Thanks everybody for coming out. <laughs> leave it on a leave it on a cliffhanger. Give them a reason to come back next week. <laughs> um, we'll be we'll oh, be well, back in we're, two weeks. Not next week. Yeah, two weeks. Obviously, yeah. Two weeks. back in two weeks. Or tomorrow. <laughs> yep, we'll be back uh, in two weeks on the twenty sixth. Um, with four right more ready to roll, um, where we will pick up from here and see what uh, see what all is going on, um, and then just you know some other reminders. On tomorrow we have our you know, if you've enjoyed what you saw tonight, we do have another we have a special one shot tomorrow. Um, it's gonna be it's called Ragnarok scenario. Um, it is us trying you know, it's me trying to GM a new gaming system called Savage, I mean, it's not a new gaming system, it's new to me, relatively new to me, called Savage Worlds, um, that I am starting to really enjoy. Um, we're going to see how well it goes, so if you're interested in seeing another gaming system, you know, to come in, or if you're interested in seeing an interesting story, come in and try to check that out. Of course, if you want to catch up on what's been going on in Ready to Roll, or even see what the rest of what happened tonight, it will be up on YouTube tomorrow. Um, oh, and of course, you can always watch the VOD on Twitch while it is here. Thank you very much for coming in. I hope you have a great evening, and we will talk with you guys later. Bye. Bye.